Good morning. Welcome to Emmanuel Southern Baptist. If y'all can make it to your seats, Keegan and I are going to open y'all with I'll Fly Away. Some glad morning when this life is over, I fly away to a home on God's election shore. I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. When the shadows of this hunt is grown, I'll fly away. Like a bird from prison bars has flown, I'll fly away. I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Yeah. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, this morning, you have to excuse me a little bit if I, I may or may not be able to sing with you, if I tell whether or not I get into a coughing fit. But this morning, we're going to focus on songs that sing about who Jesus is. They're gonna, we're going to have descriptive phrases that I want to come alive in your mind as you read, as you sing them, thinking about this is what Jesus is. We're going to have phrases that talks about the promises that he's made to us. So I want you to focus, concentrate on what you're singing about Jesus this morning. Let's go ahead and stand for our first song, and then you can sit down after that in case I forget to dismiss you. We're going to start off with The Lily of the Valley. <coughs>
As we find all that in our God and our Jesus, let's turn over and sing page 217, Oh, How I Love Jesus. <coughs>
Is there any other music this morning? Okay, thank you. Emmanuel means God with us at church and school, at home, at play. We can find God in everything. Don't believe me? Watch this. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Boy, it's been a long year so far, hasn't it? <laughs> uh, well, let's see. I've got a calendar here. Uh, let's see. December 2021. That's back there away. Let's see. April 2022. I don't think that's going to do me any good anymore, do you? Uh, even if I get all the way, let's see, last on here, there is October, November, December. Well, it's 2022. Not going to do me any good anymore, is it? I'm going to have to throw this one away, get rid of it. But I have another one. This one's got a helicopter on the front of it, too. And it says 2023 on it. So I can take this one and... There it is, January 2023. So I'm ready to go. I've got the new and improved calendars. I can do things. You know, I got the thinking. We throw out last year, it's gone. And we pick up the new one for the new year. Be a good time. There's probably some habits that we've got that became quite familiar to us last year. Maybe it's the habit of being mean to our brothers and sisters, or disobeying our moms and dads, or not being kind to our neighbor, or whatever you know what it is wouldn't it be a good time to throw those old habits out thing is though you can't just throw them out if i throw out this old calendar i still don't know what today is do i i need the new calendar we throw out old habits we better put some new habits in their place. In fact, that's what the Bible tells us. To clean out. Get rid of the old stuff. But not stay that way. Don't stay that way. Fill it up with good habits. Fill it up with things that please God. That he asks us to do. Then when Satan comes back to try and attack us, he doesn't find us empty. No, we're full of God. And he doesn't stand a chance. So as you look at the calendar and the days coming, let's try to f get rid of the old but fill it up with things pleasing to God. Let's fold our hands and close our eyes. Precious Father, thank you for another year. You've blessed us. You've enabled us. Help us, Lord, to live for you. We just pray, Lord, for each of us as we listen to our moms and dads and the teachers and the, the pastor. Help us to learn what it means to please you. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's your challenge for the week. Search for God in everything. You'll be amazed where you'll find him. Our speaker this morning is going to be uh, Steve Plank. And uh, we're glad to have you with us. And to start our year off right with God. Thank you. I'll let my wife go ahead and... Oh, okay. He was born in 
a stable, in a borrowed manger. He borrowed a lunch to feed a lot of strangers. He borrowed a colt to ride into town on. He borrowed a tomb, but he wouldn't need it long. And the only thing he bought was me when he shed his blood on Calvary. I'm redeemed by his blood for eternity. Oh, the only thing he bought was me. On the auction block of sin, this world had turned me down. Satan had told me, you're nothing but hell bound. He said, you're never gonna win, your soul's forever lost. But then I heard how Jesus paid it all on that old rugged cross. And the only thing he bought was me when he shed his blood on Calvary. I'm redeemed by his blood for eternity. Oh, the only thing he bought was me forgiven and forgotten my sins are all gone i've been bought by the blood of the one who owns it all and the only thing he bought was me when he shed his blood on calvary i'm redeemed by his blood for eternity oh the only thing he bought was me Yeah, that's one of my favorite songs she sings. Of all things the Lord could have bought, all the things he could should have bought, but he bought you and I. I just, my brain can't understand that, how he could do that. Um, if you would, turn, open your Bible to, uh, we'll go to two places. Um, go ahead and grab Matthew chapter 16, uh, about verse number twenty. Four, um, and also grab Romans chapter 13, about verse number 10. I had my wife sing that because uh, um, thinking about the new year, um, it's the first Sunday of the new year, it's important, which I'm, I'm thankful that all you guys are here, you could have been doing a whole bunch of other things sleeping or whatnot, but you guys decided to come to the house of the Lord, so uh, I believe the Lord will bless you just, just for doing that. Um, but uh, I wanted just to always reflect on the last year. Uh, the Bible says, no man having uh, put his hand to the plow and looking back uh, is fit for the kingdom of God. Um, but it doesn't, but what it does not say is to not reflect on the things that you've gone through to, to gain wisdom um, through those things. Uh, I believe at the end of every year, at the beginning of a new one, we should reflect on things we've done good, um, and most importantly, we can't do any good. We give God uh, the glory and God the thanks because it's only through Him that we do anything that's good. Um, so praise Him, honor Him, lift up His name, thank Him for saving you, thank Him. We do something good, well, God gave you the hands, the feet, the legs, the arms, the ability to work, the, the mind to remember the heart to care. God gave you all them things. So God uh, gets the glory through all of those things. Um, but looking uh, 
looking back at the last year, I kind of I got this sermon. Um, it's kind of two meshed into one, um, but but we'll see how it goes. Lord gets in, it'll be good. Um, but uh, I like to look back and just kind of think what what the Lord's done. What's He done for us? Um, and then I also got to look inwardly too, right? What What have you done for the Lord? Um, I'm sure we've done some some great things, but we all know as a Christian uh, and as a church, we all could have done more, right? We all could have done more. Um, we know the Lord's on his, the Lord's coming is getting closer than it was yesterday, right? Closer this year than it was last year, yesterday than today. It's always steadily moving forward. But where is the church? Well, where where is uh, this church moved the gospel forward? Because we know that's the whole that's the whole message of every church, right? It's not how many people we have in the choir, how many people we dunk in some some bath water. It's not how many people sit in the pew. It's not how much money I put in the plate. That has nothing to do with what the church was founded for. It was founded for one reason: to spread the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's it. Not my tradition, not Brother Mike's tradition, not so and so's tradition. It doesn't matter. It's about one person and one person only, Jesus Christ. That's it. Not my preference of style of preaching versus this person. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and him dying for the church. That's it. What have we done, myself included, this church, teen group? We all have different places that we can be used, right? I can't be used in a junior high school like, like one of these kids could. One of, these, one of these teens, kids, they, they have, they have uh, a ministry there that they could use. What are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Church, we have this community here. Um, what, how, many, how many gospel tracts have you went and handed out? How many, how many, how many times have we uh, witnessed to someone when we felt the Lord say, hey, go, go witness them? Because we all feel it, right? We could shrug it off. We could, okay, you know, Lord, that was just indigestion that was you know that, that that wasn't you that was just a cold chill that was whatever right we we could say it is anything that we want but as a child of God that living spirit that holy ghost that's inside of us that the Lord breathed into us and we became born again that bears witness to what he wants us to do right so when we we reject that we're quenching him we're grieving him we're resisting doing what he wants us to do so my question is is why are we not doing those things? And that's kind of where we'll get into the sermon. Um, I'm going to read this little verse of scripture, then we'll go to the Lord, and then we'll get to preaching. Um, in uh, Matthew chapter 16, um, no, verse number 24, it says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If may, any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is it, uh, for what is a man <clears throat> profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Question number one. Question number two, or what shall man give in exchange for his soul? Those are the two questions I want to ponder with you this morning uh, about your soul and about the soul of every uh, man, woman, boy, or girl, you meet, because they are a soul. Uh, we'll go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to come into your presence, Lord. We just want to thank you, Father, for another day, Lord, another opportunity, Lord, where you've blessed us with uh, the breath of life in our lungs, the ability to walk, uh, to, to have transportation, to come to your house, Lord. Uh, Lord, we know there's many out there that, that don't have a, a church home to go to, Lord. Maybe they're too sick. Lord, maybe they're under persecution in other parts of the earth, Lord, but we're so blessed here in America, Lord. We get to come sit in a padded pew in a heated building with lights on, Lord, and, and hear about you and, and, and be close to you, be in your house, Lord, the thing you died for. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for not being more thankful for that, Lord, because we know it's evident in this, in this earth, Lord, and in this world, Lord, that there's other people out there that are truly suffering for your cause. Because they said they believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, and called upon you to be their Savior. And they're being persecuted against their lives. 
Lord, and, and we sit here and act like it's hard, Lord. So, God, Lord, we just please forgive us, Lord, for being so weak and thin-skinned, Lord. Uh, when there's real people out there suffering for your name and us here in America, Lord, we, we think if someone looks at us wrong, uh, we're being persecuted. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, you'd help uh, gird us up like men, Lord, uh, and go out into this, this world here, Lord, and this community in 2023, Lord, and, and make a difference, Lord, and be a Christian soldier like, like you've called us to be, to put on that whole armor of God, Lord, to be able to stand. Uh, and having done all to stand, Lord, please, Father, just help us, Lord, to, to win souls for you, Lord. Uh, that's, that's why we're here. Uh, that's what the Great Commission commands, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, to give us the strength, Lord. Give us the wisdom to, to hear your voice and to follow after it, Lord. Uh, we love you, Lord. We thank you. Bless the preaching hour, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, you'd help this sermon, Lord, not to fall on deaf ears, Lord. But more than hearing from me <clears throat> or a good song or anything, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would meet with you in power, Lord, in the Holy Ghost, Lord. Lord, I, I, it's, this is not about me. This is about your son. And, Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would bless my effort as I try to lift up uh, Jesus Christ, that he will draw all men to him. Uh, and not me, not this church, but to him, Lord. Uh, we love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. All right, them two questions. <clears throat> it says, for what, should man, or for what is a man profited if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? What's the context? The context is the soul. What is a soul? Uh, we know we know from uh, Genesis. Um, we know from the Bible. God is a triune being, right? God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Three and one, one and three. The one in the middle died for me, right? We know that. Well, we, before Adam fell, were made in the likeness and image of God. We know that from Genesis. Body, soul, spirit, right? That's what, that's what humans are. We're a body, soul, spirit. The body dies. It goes back to the ground. The Bible says the spirit goes back to God, which gave it. And the soul, that's the thing that lives forever. That's the thing that's inside each and every one of us. It's a, it's a living, breathing soul. Said God breathed into uh, his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We're the only creature. What makes us different from every other creature on the face of the earth? We're a living soul. We're a living soul. We will spend forever in one of two places. Eternity with the Lord or eternity in hell. That's the one of two places. Okay? So, now that we know what a soul is, what is it profited if a man should gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Or, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give in exchange for your soul? Would you give time? Uh, would you give fame in exchange for your soul? Popularity? Uh, persuasiveness? I don't know. What, what's your soul worth? Mine... I know what my soul was worth. It was worth the Lord bleeding out on Calvary to save me. But what, what would hinder me from going out and reaching someone else? Because we, we would all be a foolish and liars if we said that we didn't know someone that was lost. Right? So what's their soul worth, worth to us? Is it, worth, is it worth going and being uncomfortable and, and handing them a church track? Is it worth being embarrassed at school when we go to tell someone about Jesus? Because what if they look at us funny? Well, was his soul worth getting looked at funny? What if you do get looked at funny? What if someone, what if someone makes us mad? What if, so, what if we go door knocking and someone slams a door in our face? What if the Lord had to carry a cross up Calvary's, here, uh, Calvary, Calvary, Calvary's hill, bleeding out, carrying the weight of all sin, not just your or my sin, which would have been enough, but the sin of the whole entire world, the rapists, the pedophiles, the murderers, all those, he took those up... I'm sure he thought, man, this is tough. And they mocked him, spit on him, punched him in the mouth, put a bag on his head, said, who prophesied to thee? Put the, plated the crown of thorns on his head and pushed the reed into it so it went into his... 
they beat him, they stripped him naked for an open shame on Calvary's cross. I'm pretty certain he went through more than, than we did, right? But we sit here in a padded pew in a nice comfy building and we say, well, what if they, what if they look at me funny? What if they judge me? What if they think something different about me? But we need to change our thinking, church. None of that compares to what the Lord did. What about what He did for you? Yes, that's worth getting, if someone spit in your face because you witnessed to Him, that's worth it. The Lord got spit in His face and He didn't deserve it. If we're all honest, we all deserve it. If it ever happens to us, I wouldn't like it, neither would you. But it's probably deserved at some point. The Lord didn't deserve that. He's worth it. He's worth being uncomfortable in this, in this comfortable world. He's worth getting uncomfortable for. And the soul that you're trying to win is definitely worth it. Because just because you're secure in your salvation, I'm saved. I, I know where my salvation, I know who I'm trusted. And I know when I shut my eyes in death, I'm going to see the Lord. I know that. I could sit here, I could go home, shut my Bible and never tell another soul. And how terrible would that be? We wonder why the church doesn't grow, because we don't, we don't get out and do nothing. We don't do like we used to. I'm talking way before my generation. I'm talking, you know, 40 years ago when the great revival was coming through America and people were getting saved. And, and, and uh, you could research it. They used to, uh, an old uh, bar would get saved and he'd, he'd burn his bar down because he'd get saved. I mean, revival like that, that could still happen. If the Lord once could, he can do it again, right? Or is he getting weak? Is this, has the world gotten too, t uh, too tough for him? He, can't, he, don't, he doesn't know how it's going to happen. It's too much. He has to pop some Alka-Seltzer's. Uh, take some Tylenol up there? I don't think so. I think he knew it all just like he always did. I think he's doing just fine up there. It's us that have gone away from him. It's us that have gotten slack. And we know with every generation, I, I could look back at my grandpa to my dad to me, you lose things. But it's up to the current generation to look back at those and say, I'm not going to lose some of these things. We each have that choice. You have that choice. I this, this church has that choice. You could be a soul-winning church if you want to be. Yeah, it's uncomfortable. Yeah, trust me, I've had plenty of doors slammed in my face. I've had people cuss me. Walking down, I've, yeah, I've had it all. But for the ones that I've got to, I don't, I, and I don't know that one person that I know of personally that's ever gotten saved out of it. I know people have come to church. I know that they've tuned in on the radio message. I know that they've had the gospel in their hand when I give them a track. And the rest is in the Lord's hand. But at least I know that I've done something. Out of all things I could do in my life, that one track, handing it out, could make an eternal difference. I could have a million dollars. I can have ten. I can have a billion dollars and not make a difference like that that, that hit matters in eternity. There's billionaires out there that won't make a dent in eternity. And I can, with one free track that, that my church gives me and I get to go hand out, I can make an eternal difference. There's power in that. There's power in that. Flip over to the book of Romans. We'll go in about number... Uh, let's jump in around... Verse number 10, Romans 13, 10 says, Love worth, worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The day each and every one of you got saved, some of you have been saved, uh, I would assume some of you have been saved for quite a while. I've been saved actually um, for almost eight and a half years. Um, but salvation is closer than when the day that I received it, right? The Lord's coming back, okay? Um, verse number 12, it says, The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the work of darkness and put on the whole armor of light. Let us walk honestly uh, as in the day. 
not as in rioting and in drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, not in strifing and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the, to fulfill the lusts thereof. Uh, I want to focus in on verse number mainly 10 and 11 um, and 12. Um, so we just kind of read in, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, the price of a soul. What, what's a soul worth? What would you give in exchange for it? Would you exchange it for a million dollars? Would you exchange it for a family reunion on a Sunday? I don't know. Maybe my, maybe my, brain's, my, my, maybe my brain is weird, but I think of things like that. If, I'm, if I miss a Sunday, if I'm not here, what if the Lord come back that day? What if we come back and I'm not doing something? I mean, I know there's a million things that I could be doing, but let's just say it's on a day that I should be doing something for the Lord. What if, I, what if he comes back and I'm not doing that thing? That terrifies me. I don't, I don't want to meet him that way, you know. Uh, I want to meet him doing what he called me to do. I want, I want to be like, yes, Lord, I may not have always done good, but I was trying. And, and I know the Lord blesses effort more than he does ability. Uh, that's why I'm here. <laughs> but, um, but it says, uh, it's a high time to awake out of sleep. Um, your soul is worth something. If you're lost in here, you don't know Jesus Christ to be your Savior, you have a, you have a soul. I'm declaring it from the Word of God. You are a soul. Your soul is going to live in one of two places. Eternity in heaven or in a lake of fire and brimstone for all eternity. That's the two places. That's it. You will go to, according to the Bible, which I believe, and I preach and I bet my soul's existence on. That's what I believe. And I'll always believe that. I don't think hell is a liter I don't think hell is a figurative place. I don't think it's the separate I believe it is separation from God, but that's but I also believe it's if the Lord said it's a lake of fire, it's a lake of fire. You know, it's, it's a lake of fire. It's really going to burn. There's torments. There's torture. There, uh, Lazarus said, let me get a drink of water for I'm tormented in this what? Flame. He didn't just say that. He really wanted to drink. He was dying for thirst. There was no water there. Uh, your soul is going to live in one of those two places. If you're lost, we could, we could change that this morning. Today could be the day that you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You said when? Right now? Yeah, right now. You could do it right now. now. This is a sermon. This doesn't matter. Your soul is what matters. If it interrupts any play or program, anything that's ever going on, this is just my belief, let, it, let the Lord have the preeminence. This is the Lord's house. This is a, my preference, your preference. I understand the church has things to do. But when the Lord sits in, in, in his house and he wants to do something, he's the master. He's the master. He's in control. We do what he wants. So if there's anyone ever, anytime I'm preaching here, you want to get saved, you say, let's do it and I'll open a Bible or someone here will. But, uh, but anyhow, but if you are... If you are saved, if you are saved, I'm going to get in where you live. How many friends do you have? How many neighbors do you have that are lost on their way, dying, going to hell? That you know. How many friends? Okay. This is the one that gets me. How many don't you know about? Because you ain't asked. You say, well, I assume they've been saved. Well, well, they go to church. I see them go to church, and we, we've met it, but yeah. But have you ever asked them? They said, you guys are going to do you, uh, tonight basically kind of like a testimony service, right? Kind of like testimony service. You, testimony is simple. Um, I mean, you're just telling what God's done for you. It's basically like you're preaching your first sermon. Paul, Paul who wrote the majority of the New Testament... 14 of the 27 books of the New Testament, uh, he, he tells his testimony time after time after time after time after time. you got to think he didn't have the whole New Testament. He was still, it was still under inspiration of God, being pinned down majority by him. He didn't have the New Testament. But he had his testimony. And you see how that first church started? Like a wildfire. Why can't it do the same thing? Because we have it so easy. Because we didn't have to get we didn't have to get the persecuted to get this Bible. 
This is a bloody book about a man that died a bloody death. But church, I just kind of want to want to just I want to know what's your friend's soul's worth? What's your community? What's your neighbor? This hits me just as much as it hits you guys. Trust me, you're not alone. The Lord, the Lord kills me with, with messages like this because I think how many people do I know personally that I've never asked? That I've never took the time because what if they think? So what? What if they think it? I'm sure people think a lot of things about me. You know? But the one thing I'm not going to be ashamed of is the Lord. The Bible tells us not to be. 1 Corinthians 15.34 says, Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. We need to be out spreading the word of God. They don't know because we're not telling them. That's, that's just it. If you send your kids to school... And they don't learn 2 plus 2 is 4. And you're sending them there to that school all the time. Well, whose fault is it? If your kid's paying attention and doing what they're supposed to, right? It's the teacher's fault. Because they didn't tell them. Well, why do people not know about the Lord? Because the church ain't telling them. Yeah, it's, and I know, I know, there's a lot of churches out there, but there's not a lot of the Lord's churches out there. I'll just put it that way. Um... Because we have more churches and more ministries and more God on the earth, right? More activities, more youth outreach. Then how come there's more kids going to dope and drinking and drugs and partying and, and more sin on this earth than ever? Because the church is, like in the last age, the Lord's on the outside of the church. He's, not, he's no longer in the center. It's not about him holding this thing together. It's about the, the, the deacon board and this thing and this thing and this thing. And that's how we hold it together. And we keep the kids in by having all these activities and hamburgers and hot dogs and games. And No, used to, used to people fell in love with the Lord and that's what kept them in church. And that was it. And that was enough. But now we think we got to make all that. No, it's about the Lord. That's it. It's just about the Lord. And if he's not enough for you, then I don't. Then you're on the wrong side. That's just, that's just how I feel. If the Lord dying for you isn't enough for you to love him and come to his house, you need to get your heart right or you need to get saved. That, that's, you're either so far away from God you don't know it or you've never known him. And I wish to God you would because if you knew him like I knew him, it, you'd never be the same. Um, it says uh, Moses in Hebrews 11 uh, 25 I'll kind of close with this it says uh, choosing rather to suffer the affliction of the people of God rather to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season rather, rather Moses chose to suffer with God's people than to enjoy the pleasures of sin it's not always easy choosing to do what God wants you to do. Especially as a kid, I could, I could tell you when I was 13, 14 years old, I used, to, I used to be one of the little kids up here that would sing and do all that, and do all that stuff at our, at our church. I went to New Hope, just kind of right across, across the road from you guys. I went to New Hope Baptist uh, there in Peace Valley. And when I got about 13 years old, young kids, I just decided that none of my friends wanted to hear about it. I used to go to school and witness and tell them. And then they started not thinking it was cool, picking on me, whatnot. And then I just decided, you know what? The heck with it. It doesn't matter. And from 13 to 25, I made a wreck of my life. It just kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Uh, and there was times when I could see the Lord reach his hand out to try to help me. And I would just kind of slap it away or, or not acknowledge him. Um, because I knew what he wanted me to do. He wanted me to go to that person that cared with my heart. But then that means that if you care, you're, there's a chance you're going to get hurt, right? We all know that. That's human nature. Um, and I didn't want that. So I kept hardening my heart and turning away from the Lord uh, until one day I was so, I mean, it was just, 
well, my life was a wreck, and I could tell you my whole testimony. And, uh, but finally, the Lord saved me, and I said, okay, Lord, um, I'll come back, and I'll be that person, and I'll risk my heart getting hurt because he gave me this thought, and we'll finish. The Lord, I'm sure the Father was heartbroken when the Son had to become sin. He didn't just come to this earth, but when he was on Calvary, he became sin. That means God the Father, for the first and only time, looked down and could no longer see his son. He seen sin, and that was all. I'm sure that broke his heart, enough to make the whole world go, the, the whole sky go black, right? We know that. Um, and the earth quaked and the veil was rent. But I'm sure that he suffered some heartache for me to have his son. I know Jesus suffered to save my soul. So my suffering and my heart getting hurt a little bit for some maybe 80, 100 years, right? The Bible says uh, three score and ten, if, or three score if by reason of strength, or 70, 80 years old, what the Bible says. So if I suffer every day for 70, 80 years, that's nothing more for what the Lord went through uh, that day on Calvary. And it's more than enough for us to serve this life and witness and get uncomfortable. If I, if we, had a, we had a thing I'd want to say. I would say, get uncomfortable in 2023 to serve the Lord. What does that mean? That may be someone that says, I don't, that little boy that was sitting up here, he, he said, I, I, I don't have a good singing voice. Or, or he said something like that. I said, yeah, neither do I. My wife sings way better than me. I can't carry a tune, can't play a musical instrument, but I have a guitar I try to strum on, and uh, I'm not very good, and I clearly can't sing. Um, but I still, I still try to use what the Lord's given me. I get uncomfortable with it. I don't like singing. I've ever, trust me, I have no reason to sing. But, uh, <laughs> please. Um, but, my, my wife, but that doesn't mean I can't sing to the Lord. I, I can't make a joyful noise to him. That's why I told that little boy, I said, he didn't say sing a cappella and all those things. He said make a noise, a joyful noise. That's all of us, we could do that. All of us that can't, that can't carry a tune, we could make a joyful noise. Uh, so, um, but anyways, get uncomfortable. That might be handing a track out this year, church. That might, be, that might be finally, if you're lost in here right now, that might be stepping out of the pew this morning and asking the Lord to save you and coming into the fold of Jesus Christ. That might be witnessing to your best buddy at church, or on the bus. There could be a million different ways for you to get uncomfortable. And when you get scared about it, church, just remember the Lord was very uncomfortable. He sweat in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was so uncomfortable, he sweat, as it were, the Bible says, great drops of blood. I've been nervous, and I feel like I've had panic attacks. and anxiety. I feel like I've had all them things, but I've never been under such stress and turmoil that I sweat blood. I don't know if you guys have either, but I'd say the Lord wins. And if he could go through that for us, it's very small for what he asks us to go through for him. We'll have, a, we'll have the altar. Well, I, I always do a, an, an altar call. If anyone wants to come up, uh, now's the time. Um, we'll bow our heads. Uh, and the altars are open. If anyone wants to come, come. Let's turn to page 125. I surrender all. <laughs>